Welcome to the Pathways to Profitability podcast, personal tales of business success, where we hear local business owners' personal stories of their trials and tribulations that got them to where they are today. Here's your host, Cheryl Mucha, CEO of CFO Your Way. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I am so excited for our guest today, Elizabeth Fuller. Um, she goes by Beth, but um, we want to share with you her pandemic pivot journey and all that um, she has done to start and build a business during these very trying times. Beth, thank you so much for being here. I am so glad that you were able to take the time to do this. Thank you so much for having me, Cheryl. This is such a blast. And seeing your smiling face again is just <laughs> brightens up this gloomy day here in New England. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. So a couple of weeks ago, Beth and I did, uh, I was on her, I guess on her podcast, all about food and Jersey, and it was just so much fun. Um, so we'll, we'll include the link to that as well in the, uh, in the notes here. Um, but let's talk about you and your journey and your pivot and yes. what what was behind that. I love talking about me. No, I'm kidding. Um, so <laughs> for a long time, I did event sales and uh, I've always been creative and artsy and done like art in the background of my life. You know, my parents, they met at NASA and DC in the 70s. And so to them, like the idea of an artist career just wasn't a thing. And so I always kind of kept it on the back burner and my parents pushed me, you know, you go to college, you get a job, you get a long-term career, you retire, blah, 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 which is great. I mean, it's their generation and I, that's the end goal for me eventually. But I, during the pandemic, I was able to take all of my skills and apply them to this new career that I've now in business that I built for myself, meaning that I was doing event sales for the last 10 plus years here in the Boston metro area. And when the pandemic happened, events stopped. And well, it totally, was, I mean, it was unbelievable how it just literally life came to a halt in so many different ways. And I, even though my career was based on people getting together, I, really took that for granted on every single possible level. Um, so I tried to stay afloat the best I could. And in 2020, the other thing is I am a person who thrives on social interaction. I desperately need it in my day-to-day -day life. And I decided to start a podcast just because I needed to still feel the intimate connection with someone beyond my husband and my poor dog, Oliver, my love of my life, my fur baby, my golden retriever. <laughs> I talked to him incessantly. And so it was like, he just looked at me and was like, mama, you have to stop talking to me and you need to talk to somebody else. So Let's like, talk about food, right? right? So I was like, you know, and the turmoil that was going on in the world at, during 2020, it was one of those things that it, I wanted to find a way to do more. And I, I wanted to find a way to have the I, I knew food could connect us all, right? Like we can come together and share a meal together and we can see through our differences. And I, I wanted to find a way to also uplift those around me. So at first it started that I just wanted to have this social interaction with people. And then it turned into so much more than that. And it's also a way that I now give back to entrepreneurs and to other people all over the world and in the different communities to uplift one another. And again, show our commonalities through food. Well, anyway, cut to, I didn't know what went into making a podcast. I had no idea how to produce, host, edit, any sort of audio, tech, software, anything. So I figured it out in a week and um, I then <laughs> decided, oh my gosh, I need marketing for this. So I dusted off my DSLR camera and I started snapping pictures. And because it's a food centric podcast and, you know, I did event sales, but really my passion is food. So it's this great dynamic of I'm now taking pictures, which I absolutely loved and always have loved photography. And I've been doing it on the side for 30 plus years. And now I'm doing that 
I'm connecting with people and chatting, as you can tell, I absolutely love talking. And then I'm also, you know, finding a way to uplift people in the community. It was such a win, 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 win. Anyway, so, so I'm taking well, all these pictures. I'm figuring out how to market on social media, which I used to pay people to do when I was the director of sales at the colleges for events and other companies that I worked for. So I'm figuring all that out. And at 40, you're never too old to teach this this uh, young pup do tricks, right? So then I start getting calls from companies saying to me, your photos are beautiful. We want to buy them. And I'm like, oh my God, I can, re- <laughs> I can really do this. Like it validated every single thing that I've always wanted to do. And I just, I was like, I'm going for this. I'm not turning back. I am absolutely 120% doing food photography. And I still do the podcast. Like I said, that's more of a uh, way I give back and a way I still like to interact with people and uplift brands and and just entrepreneurs and, and people in general in the community. And that's also a way I get to actually learn more about different cultures and people and like w- what it's like to own a farm and at 32 or, you know what I mean? Like all of that good stuff. But I started this photography business and it's taken off to the point that like, I'm not ever going to not do this. This is, this is so my soul's calling and um, yeah, I'm thrilled, thrilled. So that was a kind of a long winded answer. (laughs) No, that's fine. And I, I mean, I love that journey and, you know, I always say when you do what you love, what you're so passionate about, you never work a day in your life. And and I can see that in you, that you're just so passionate about what you do and the interaction with people and the connection with food. I, I think, you know, having a meal around a table is what brings us all together. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a the, the thing I loved about what I do now, I mean, picking up a camera is the smallest part of being a photographer. I mean, right. If you, there's so much more that goes into the day to day. And I'm so grateful that I actually decided to do this pivot now in my life because I had, you know, almost 15 plus years in the corporate world doing proposals, dealing with client relations, event sales, marketing, all of that stuff, negotiating, I mean, contracts, vendors, project management, all of those skills. I'm applying to my now business because you need to do all of that plus be the CEO of your company plus then handle all of the, you know, uh, planning of the shoot, the food styling, the prop arrangement, the conceptualization of these shoots. And then to, to really drill down on, as I'm pointing to my key light next to me, the lighting, I mean, everything it's, And then the editing, how to edit beautiful photos, because it's just snapping, like I said, snapping the picture is much fun and as satisfying as that is, because it's all of these things that get piled in together in this one single image. But it could be two weeks, three weeks worth of work just to get a still image. Um, And it's such a good payoff. It's, It's the best way to pat myself on the back home. It's instant gratification because a lot of times when you do work, whatever your, your career job may be, you might not see the, the satisfaction right away. And these are instant results that I look down and I'm like, I got it. I got the shot. Like I, I, I nailed that. (laughs) The client's stoked. It's going to go on a billboard in times square. This is insane. And then and then after you're done, you get to have a great meal, right? Well, uh, that's not always the truth. No, <laughs> no. There's a lot. Unfortunately, I mean, there's two ways, two schools of thought. Like, there's a lot of, and I wrote an article about this recently for another publication, a lot of food waste um, in the food photography and product photography space because a lot of that food sitting on set under lights for hours and hours and you can't eat it after that um a lot of food isn't cooked all the way um because it looks juicier and more tasty when it's raw and like not that you put chemicals or anything on it but you're spraying certain things and oils 
on wow. the food to make it look more appetizing. Um, so you don't always want to eat that, unfortunately. It's that's, that, just, that's the bummer of it. And that's just part of all the details that go into, yeah. like you think, you know, a photo shoot with food, you're not dealing with movement or um, personalities or Sometimes anything else, you are, but there's you know, other details. Ice cream has its own personality. That is a that is a finicky actor when you bring it to set. Let me tell you that that <laughs> she goes real quick, real quick. Yeah, I guess you. with all those hot lights and everything, yeah. and your energy around it. Exactly. Yeah, it melts instantly. But you want the drips. But then you go through a lot of it. But anyway, yeah. So you, I, you have a lot of energy, and I love that. And it just it comes right through the right through the uh, computer here. But what motivates you every day? What um, what gets you out of bed each and every morning? Well, today it was this podcast. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Usually it's breakfast and coffee. That's what motivates me first thing in the morning. No, I love what I do. I literally, when I, like, I, th since I've been doing this now professionally for two years, I can honestly say there is not a single day that I think to myself, oh, it's a Monday. I don't have Mondays anymore. I don't have, oh, it's a Friday. Phew, I'm done. Like I work seven days a week, usually in some capacity. And my days are twice as long as I have ever worked in my entire life. I'm not done in an eight hour day. I work 16 hour days easily easily some days and it doesn't feel like it it's just i am so excited about what's next i feel as though i am literally on the precipice of greatness i just saw that Shit's creek episode the other day and when warrior says that and i, I literally i just i can't stop the motivation i feel right now I just can't stop. And it's one of the first times in my 40 years on this planet that I have felt this excited about doing what I'm doing. Um, and I've done a lot of crazy stuff. And this is, I, I bartended at Justin Timberlake's 21st birthday. Like I've done some crazy stuff. And but it is shows, your passion shows. And that just, you know, the motivation and the passion equals success. Yeah, it really does. And I think... I mean, I do have work-life balance. Don't get me wrong. Like, I do make space and time for, you know, myself. Like, the, the greatest thing about working for yourself, though, is, and it takes time. When you come from a corporate Monday through Friday, 8 to 5 or whatever it is, when you then switch to being an entrepreneur and your own business owner, like, for example, this past Tuesday, I structured my week that I got to spend lunch with my mom. And we went and did a couple of things. She lives an hour away. And it has taken me two years to get to a point where I don't feel guilty about taking that time for myself. And it's not, it, it really was, I was on the struggle bus with that for a while because you have it in your head that it's a Monday through Friday lifestyle here yes. in the U.S. that we that we live. And then all of a sudden when you flip the switch and now I work some days on Sundays, I work some days on, all through Saturday, just depends when I want to work and when I need to work. Um, and then some days I take Monday off, like whatever, you right. know. So but you do need to. There is a burnout. Burnout's real. Uh, exhaustion is real. And you do need to know where that fine line is for yourself. Cause it's different for everyone. Right. And then you need to do whatever you need to do to recharge your batteries. For me, it was binge watching enough Shit's Creek on Netflix that Netflix <laughs> shamed me and said, are you still watching this? And I was like, yes, Netflix, I am still watching this. Um, but the work-life balance is so important to be able to step away on a Tuesday to go spend time with your mom. And I mean, it's so important. And and that just adds, I think, to the motivation and the the creativity and, you know, the, the ultimate success of, of your journey. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I'm sure you do it, too, with your business that you carve out time and you're like, I'm cruising to the shore on this Friday. I'm, I can work from there. I'm not. I need me some saltwater taffy, right? <laughs> I ate an entire pound of that the other day when you came on my podcast and I ordered it from them. 
And then oh, really? Two day, yeah, two days later, it was at my doorstep. Cheryl, and it I was fabulous, the, right? <laughs> yeah, I ate the entire pound. My husband, I was, I hid it on him. And then I squirreled, I took all the pictures <laughs> and then I literally hid it because I was like, I don't know if I want to share this. And then he found it and he was like, why is there only five pieces left <laughs> in the box? And I was like, I don't know what happened. Well, yeah, the say was I only ordered five, right? I know, right? No, it was a big box. <laughs> I don't think and so the I pictures were beautiful. I saw the pictures. Size box. Yeah. So if is there like one person or one instance in your career in you know, or or your childhood even that you can like say, that's what got me where I am now? No. No, me. I got my no, I'm just kidding. No, I think, you know, my parents, like I said, they met at NASA in DC. They were both extremely, extremely, they are, they're not, they're still here. They're not dead. So I shouldn't say (laughs) in the past tense, they're very, 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 very smart. And they have worked in uh, very like uh, engineering, computery sort of things, their entire careers. And I watched my dad struggle with not doing what he loved. And he always told me, you know, you need to find something you love and it will never feel like work, right? It's kind of like what you just said, Cheryl, how like you never, once you find something you love, you never work a day in your life kind of thing. The other thing was that I come from, I am a first generation American. My dad is from Hungary. He left in 56 during the revolution and came here for asylum. My grandfather's parents came from Southern Italy. So both lineages of where I originated from, right? They are all extremely hard, grinded out workers. And I think that's always been in entrepreneurs as well. And I think that's always been instilled in me. And I've seen it through generations of generations of my family is watching people come here to find a better life and live, quote, the American dream, but also what their American dream looks like to them, you know? And my grandfather used to tell me that uh, a really good sign of a person is how hard they work. And I know that, I mean, he's, he's passed, but I know he would be extremely proud of me to see how hard I work in a good way. Like I said, I don't grind it out to the point that I'm pulling my hair out and I do still have balance. So please don't, I hope your, your listeners or your viewers don't think that, I am saying like, you need to work 40 hours a day in order to be successful. That's not the case at all. But I, I do uh, put right now my career in business. It's, it's a notch above a lot of other things in my life. Like I'm not traveling. My goal isn't to travel to Thailand this year. You know, my goal is to have an incredible Q4 that I'm like, hell yeah. And like ring that bell in my own noggin kind of vibe. But Some some years my goal is to travel to Thailand. It's not and, this year though. And goals are important. And some yeah. it, and like you just said, sometimes it's important to have a personal goal. Sometimes it's important to have a business goal. But they all make you who you are. And and again, it's all about success, contributing to the success. Totally Which leads me to the next thing I wanted to talk mm-hmm. to you about was how do you define your business to su- success? Well, that I can pay my bills. I think that's, that's very important. important. <laughs> I think, you know, be, like full, full disclosure, being able to do what I love every single day and being able then to pay my mortgage and all of my other bills from doing what I love. Like I, it's, it, it's, it's amazing. I don't need to see, you know, uh, millions of dollars in the bank right now in order to define my success. It's literally the fact that I get to shape and mold every day around what I love and not have to think, oh God, am I really going to have to go back to doing events? Like, am I really going to have to? No, that's not even a thought in my mind. Like I, that's my, my measure of success that I get to do what I love. 
And, and that was going to be my next question of you. Like, would you ever go back to no. event planning and doing what you were doing before? Or you're like, you're full steam ahead with, yeah. you know, this, this journey that you're on with your business. Yeah. I'm full steam ahead with this journey that I'm on with my business without question. I think the only thing is I love to leave the door open for any and all possibilities. Um, would I ever do event planning again? I mean, if Oprah called me and she was like, yo, Beth, I would love for you to plan this event for me. I'd be like, Oprah, of course. Or Beyonce, Queen Me, of course. Like, let me wrap what I'm doing and I'm going to take some visual shots while we're, while we're hanging out. If you don't mind, can you see? <laughs> but like, I, I absolutely, I feel right now that I am being my most authentic self in my life without question. If the Food Network call me tomorrow and they're like, hey, would you want to be on TV and host this incredible TV show? Hell yeah, Food Network. Hey, I'm here. I'm here. You want to, I'm, I'm open to all, anything and all possibilities. But I, right now in this moment, oh, I'm not, there's no, there's no looking back. I'm only looking forward. And whatever forward is, it's, it's amazing. It's going to be amazing. Go, go with the flow, right? Heck yeah. You never Heck yeah. know what tomorrow will bring. No. Mm-mm. Great. It's, it's you just elude so much energy and at eight a.m. What time? It's yes, like literally eight fifty-six in the morning. I know, and <laughs> I'm, at, I'm at a twelve most mornings. I usually start fading though, probably around like five or six. I'm in bed at eight thirty. Don't but let hey. this, this face fool you. Like I eight thirty nine o'clock, your girl is out. Was I up at four o'clock this morning? You better believe I was. But that's part of the work life balance. Like we yeah. need to take care of ourselves, and and you know, without us being energized and rested and taking care of ourselves, feeding our heart and souls, we're no good at what we yeah. do. No, absolutely. Like the debeautification process. That's what I call it. It starts at 8 30, 9 o'clock at the latest. Like <laughs> if I'm living, I'm, I'm living it up, my sleepy time tea might like lead into 9 p.m. But oh yeah, your girl is taking her makeup off and and going to bed and gonna read some Brit lit chick lit thing on my Kindle. <laughs> yeah. That's what I do. That's who I am. Hey, great. <laughs> so do you like to be in the kitchen? Do you like to cook or bake oh, yeah. or what's like, what's your specialty? In right. The kitchen? Uh-huh. Yeah. So this is a funny question. So what's really funny is my husband is an executive chef and he's been an executive chef for about 20 years at various high end country clubs in uh, Boston, in New Jersey, who is uh, in uh, Morristown. He has worked in summit and, uh, and now he works for Wellesley College here in the Boston metro area as their executive chef. He doesn't cook at home at all, at all. He has cooked me in the seven years we've been together, maybe five times, maybe, maybe, maybe. And so I cook all the time at home. I cook every meal. I uh, love it. I've always loved cooking. It's always been a huge outlet for my creativity. It's been a way for me to explore other cultures and learn about other people and learn about, you know, what it's like to eat Indonesian food. And like, it's not that then, like I start usually, I dip my toe in something and I'm like, ooh, I wanna learn, uh, or I wanna eat a soup dumpling, right? So I'll go to Chinatown, I'll find the best, most authentic place to eat them, I'll eat them. Then I try to figure out how can I make this at home? Then I probably test it out maybe two or three times at home. This is just for funsies. This isn't even for like a shoot or anything. This is just me. Like this is a wild and crazy Saturday night for yours truly. (laughs) And then I will make the soup dumplings at home. Will my husband and I will eat them and critique them and remake them to make them better And yeah, so that's literally, I have every kitchen gadget. I probably have four of them. I have multiple, like I have two sous vide machines. Who has two sous vide machines in their house? I do. I do. I don't even know what that is. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Like it's an immersion circulator where it creates a water bath and the perfect temperature to slowly cook something submerged in water in like a vacuum seal. (laughs) 
don't even get me started. I am such a food dork on my own. Like I only watch food centric shows usually. But that just adds to your passion. It does. And this is why when it came to being a photographer, which I've always loved, and then to incorporate food, (laughs) mind blown. And then on top of that, I absolutely love sales. I totally love writing proposals, connecting with clients, doing the marketing outreach for clients. I love negotiating. I love all of that. And so it's just this crazy culmination of everything I've ever loved in life, basically. (laughs) Smashed into one career and here I am. So you're doing it all. For your business, I'm a one you woman have, show. You're, you're one woman show. Good for you. Um, are there specific systems or anything that you use to help you stay organized or stay on top of things? Um, coffee, hope. Uh-huh. Um, I'm talking a computer <laughs> system here. No, I know CRM, so, your accounting system. Yeah, I mean, I use QuickBooks. I, uh, that's about as far as my accounting goes. I I love talking to you about this too. I feel like I should be like hiding. I'm on top of it, Cheryl. I'm on top of it, right? (laughs) I'm doing QuickBooks and I got a guy named Ed. (laughs) I got a guy. I got a guy. No, but seriously, it's QuickBooks and, um, I, I stay on top of it. Like I will carve out at least one or two days a month that I just deal with accounting, you know, like that, but for contracts and proposals and things like that, it's nothing fancy over here. Um, I use a bunch of different, if you want to talk about editing softwares and you want to talk about tethering and you want to talk about stop motion softwares and, and all of the photography stuff, well then I can get fancy with you on that. But when it comes to accounting, no, it's, it's QuickBooks, <laughs> maybe an Excel spreadsheet here and there. <laughs> and, and all those other programs you just mentioned are, again, what gets you, you know, get you jazzed up oh, and get yeah. you, you know, the beautiful photos that you take. Yeah, but I do, I will say though, I like I said, I do carve out time to do all of the, the accounting and business side of that. Like I invoice on time, I follow up with my clients when I need to on those invoices, which is rare. Like everyone knock on wood pays on time and, um, which is great. I love them. I love my clients. Love you guys. Thank you for paying on time. And, um, (laughs) yeah. And then I just, I, I, but I do like, I'm, I am very diligent about when I get paid from a, from a client, I will take, you know, a certain percentage of that. And that goes into my tax account. I do take it never to be seen again. I do take another certain percentage of that. And that goes into an account that is specifically for business expenses. Then I have another one that's specifically for what I call like business fund money that, that goes then to buy new props, new lighting, new, whatever fun thing I want for my business then. But I am very diligent about that because I refuse. The other thing I've, really tried to implement with my business is I really don't overspend or overextend myself financially. Like I, (laughs) your tech guy Brody's going to die laughing when I say this for my podcast, your girl definitely uses GarageBand to do all of the podcast tweaks because it's a free application on my MacBook. Like it does the job. It does the job enough for me. Like I really do try to be, I try not to overextend myself financially. So I love that though, because so many people go into business and they're like, and they don't think about the taxes. They don't think about, you know, what I'm going to need to purchase in a month or whatever. And you, you know, I'm, I'm proud of you, girl. Thanks. (laughs) Thanks. And it comes, I think it really though comes from, being in the corporate business world for, you know, 15 plus years, 20 odd years that you see business expense. Like I've managed a budget for decades with companies, with my departments that I ran. And so, you know, these expenses, these things happen, things break, 
things need to be replaced. Like it's not a surprise when something, you know, I don't want to swear on your podcast, but something, you know, goes to the wayside and you're like, well, I need to fix that. Like I've dropped a lens before, like a $2,000 lens. And you're like, shoot, I need to find a way to fix that. But I had money set aside to fix that, you know? And like the other thing too is, and this is more specific to photography, but people can apply to whatever they want, that you don't need the latest and greatest anything to make your business fantastic. What you need, you're the, the honest to God secret sauce for the most successful businesses is you being your most authentic self. If you are being true to who you are and you have a, and you're doing it in a, in a, in a good hearted way, you're not trying to like be shysty about stuff and you're being authentic, it's going to work. It's absolutely going to work. I promise you like my camera that I take all of my photos on, I got it used. It's a beautiful camera and it is uh, nicer than a camera I had two cameras ago, but I still bought it used. I didn't buy a brand new camera for, you know, $10,000. Like I spent a couple of grand on it, but it's used. So I, I think my long winded lesson with all of this is like Cheryl just said, do you, but like, don't, I don't know if you said that I lost my train of thought. Hopefully you can edit some of this. <laughs> Brody, can you but no, that? it's it. Your tangent was beautiful because you don't need all the bells and whistles. No. It's more about who you are and how you interact with your clients and and the end product that you bring. And and you don't need the ten thousand dollar camera to to have that beautiful end product. Yeah, exactly. But you bring your authentic self and your skills and in, in the you know the beauty of what you do to the table. Oh, thank you. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I think that's with anyone in any business. That oh, yeah. Be, right. And you, it, a lot of it too, it's word of mouth. Like Cheryl, I'm sure with your client base that you get referrals constantly from other people. And, and it's, it's important to treat people the way you want to be treated, that old golden rule. And lead with kindness. Like if you're doing it with the best intentions, truly, and you're being super authentic, it's going to work. It's going to work. And it might, and the other thing too, is don't let people tell you, because a lot of people told me, oh, you just need time. Oh, you know, some businesses take a couple of years to get off the ground. No, they don't just do you do don't, you don't have to listen to other people's fears, but I mean, did it take a minute? Maybe. But did it take three years? No. <laughs> right. No, I didn't what? know. You you set the pace. You yeah. worked hard. You you know reached out to those connections. You yeah. produced a beautiful product. Yeah, I mean, I pitch probably a hundred clients a week. But and that's today. fine. Yeah. And there's percentages there too, right? Yeah, uh, the great conversion pitch. rate. Yeah. So thank you so much for being here. Let's just talk a little bit about how our audience finds you. How do they get in touch with you? Oh, everybody. ElizabethRFuller.com. Please check me out. Check out my photography. If you'd like to work together, it would be an honor to be a part of your team helping to tell your brand story. Please check out my Instagram page at Elizabeth Fuller Photography. And you can send me an email, ElizabethFuller80 at gmail.com. Okay, perfect. And and how about your uh, podcast to watch episodes oh, of your podcast? Yeah. I'm don't... there. Yeah, Cheryl's <laughs> there. Um, it's called Food Adventures. You can find it wherever you podcast. It's an audio podcast. It's on every platform that you want to listen to. It comes out every Friday. Um, new episode every every week. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, right? And that's what we're all about, right? Enjoying life as we travel the journey, right? Absolutely. Well, thank you, Beth, so much for being here. Um, our audience has so much to learn from you. So I hope they all enjoy listening and seeing. Um, but thank you so much. Cheryl, thanks for having me. This was so much fun. I can't wait to chat with you in the future. Drink some wine at the shore. Yeah, have some absolutely. taffy. Absolutely. Eat some saltwater taffy. We'll get some Coors ice cream. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> thanks, Beth. Bye. That's it for today's episode of Pathways to Profitability. 
remember to ask yourself, where can I pay my success forward today?